r slash backrooms is a very interesting place to say the least as the official backrooms reddit page it sees a variety of different posts cool liminal images interesting found footages and unique lore additions from everybody in the community as well as some other things that are <laughs> just dumb but sometimes amongst the noise strange and unnerving posts slip into view my very real encounter with the backrooms. This was the chilling title of Reddit users Alex Bass Guy's post to the subreddit over four years ago. And in this video, I want to examine this post, read it, go over it, and share his alleged real encounter with glitching outside of our reality. There are several encounters like this on the Reddit. Some of them are fake, but some of them are what I think to be real encounters, glitches in the matrix, if you please. And if you want more of these, leave a like, because I think these are pretty cool. And if you don't, uh, tell me. This post was made four years ago in 2020, which was well before the mainstream popularity of the Backrooms concept, especially in the found footage department. At that point, the Backrooms was mainly a niche internet's creepy pasta. You might have seen the picture, you might have seen the 4chan post, the lore itself wasn't really fleshed out, and there was no mainstream popularity. The original poster, Alex Bass Guy, or ABG as I'll be referring to him as, shares his personal real-life experience with seemingly slipping out of the reality, which is the front rooms, and into a backrooms-like place. I'm going to read the post to you right now, and then I'm going to examine and break it down. So sit back, grab a bowl of popcorn, grab a Dr. Pepper or something, and enjoy this story. Keep in mind, this is an allegedly true encounter. I can't verify if it's 100% true, but the OP seems to believe it is. Today, I stumbled upon a YouTube video from the excellent Nick Crowley discussing the phenomena known as the backrooms. As someone who has spent literal decades savoring the strange, the dark, the occult, the conspiratorial, I have somehow missed out on this particular phenomena story concept. Watching his short but intriguing overview of the backrooms, it made my skin crawl. I had a very real, very waking experience just a few years ago, which took me to a place that is disturbingly similar to these so-called backrooms. Imagine my surprise when the video and most related content described this as nothing more than a creepypasta with his roots in 4chan. And while my experience does have a seemingly innocent explanation, the similarities are far too intriguing to ignore. This is all 100% true as it happened to the best of my recollection. For background, I am a professional musician and a record producer with a career that started in 2010. Nowadays I spend my time in the studio, but for many years I toured the US full time as a bass player with a wide variety of bands. In mid-2017, one of the larger bands that I toured with, 40 Ounces to Freedom, a sublime tribute act, was hired to play the Brooklyn Bowl in Las Vegas. This was an excellent gig, it paid great, and we were always treated very well by the staff. The Brooklyn Bowl is part of the Caesars family of properties. As such, we were always put up in the very nice rooms at one of the Caesars' owned casinos on the Strip. On the night in question, we had been placed in individual suites at the link. After playing the gig, we all went back over to our rooms. My bandmates were excited to spend the rest of the evening partying it up on the strip and hanging with fans. However, I had a very early flight out of McCarran the next morning to play with a different group back home in Colorado. I decided to forego the offer of a night of fun and just relax in my room until the flight left. Sometime around 3 a.m., I decided to go down to the lobby for a snack, so I got dressed, put on my shoes, and left my room. I walked to the end of the hallway and called the elevator. Getting on, I pressed the big rounded L button. Lobby. That's when things got strange. The elevator lurched slightly, as if it didn't quite know what to do with my request. The overhead light flickered out for a split second, but after a beat, as if nothing was amiss, it began its descent without further protest. In the moment, I didn't think much of it. It was late, after all. Perhaps it had been sitting for a moment, or just needed maintenance. But when I reached my destination, I knew something was wrong. The door slid open, but where there should have been a bustling casino lobby, 
there was simply a large, empty, white room. A rusted, red-painted metal staircase led down from a landing in front of the elevator to the floor. Opposite the staircase, an enormous red metal door. Above the staircase, a loudly humming, off-yellow fluorescent light. Initially, I was baffled. I looked at the display in the elevator. It confirmed this was indeed the lobby. My mind raced to all sorts of stories and places I'd learned about. Glitches in reality, underground cults, human trafficking rings, illicit auctions, Silent Hill, but all of that was just lore. I had to know what I had stumbled on. I walked down the staircase and approached the door. By sheer luck, it was open. I swung it open and stepped through. Around a sharp corner, there stretched a long, faded hallway with seemingly infinite rooms branching off in either direction. Aging, greenish-yellow wallpaper patterned with what looked like a leaf or floral motif. Dank, musty, moist carpet, all lit by humming, flickering fluorescent tubes. A sharp sense of danger and wrongness tingled through me. What the hell is this place? How did I end up here? I decided to press forward a bit, overcoming the impending sense of doom that had consumed me. I walked up the hallway a short distance, peering into some of the rooms. Each was dark and empty, devoid of windows, and covered in the same fading wallpaper. There was what looked like graffiti here and there, scrawled illegibly on the walls in black ink. After venturing past three or four rooms, each step became a dare. I knew I should turn around and go back to my room. Whatever this place was, it was not a pleasant place to be. It made no sense, and so, trusting my better judgment, I turned around, went back to the red door, up to the staircase, and called the elevator. After what seemed like an eternity, the door slid open, and I was whisked without incident back to the plush confines of the link. I had decided that I suddenly wasn't hungry. Several hours later, I readied my things to leave for the airport. I got in the same elevator, wondering if it would take me to the same strange hallway. I pressed the large rectangular L once more. No shutter, no flicker this time. Just a moment later, the doors opened to reveal the bustling pre-dawn casino lobby that should have been there all along. Now, as I said at the beginning of the story, there is a partially plausible explanation for this experience. The Link was established in 2014, after a short two-year stint under the name The Quad. But prior to 2012, the lot belonged to the aging Imperial Palace Casino. The Imperial Palace was built in 1979, and it featured an Asian-themed decor. My best guess was that I somehow happened upon a section of the hotel that was simply a part of the old Imperial Palace that hadn't been renovated. Descriptions of the interior of this old property roughly match what I saw, however there are still key elements in my experience that made no sense to me. The Imperial Palace was destroyed to be rebuilt as the Quad in 2012, five years before I was there. How would any section of the old hotel still remain? Even if there was, in theory, still an untouched portion of the Imperial Palace left under the building that was torn down, five years of renovation were done and two name changes occurred. Why would this area be easily accessible to guests? And through a strange service entrance, no less? The elevator took me to the ground floor, yet the area I was in was clearly old hotel rooms. The ground floor of casinos almost never house rooms only food courts and gaming floors. Rooms start on the third or fourth floors. Why were these rooms seemingly on the ground? The exact button on the exact same elevator took me to the link lobby the second time around. Did the elevator massively glitch the first time? These questions all remain unanswered. So did I find a defunct hallway buried in the bowels of a casino, or did I stumble through a strange barrier into the back rooms? I leave it to you to decide. That was the full story that this Redditor experienced of slipping out of reality, glitching to the matrix, into the back rooms, whatever you want to call it. The original poster then went to the comments stating that this is quote, not an ARG, I promise. I'm just a normal dude who had a very weird experience, lol. I'll keep everyone updated regardless, end quote. So now that you've heard the whole story, let's take some of those key details he mentioned and go over them. 
The OP gave the brief history of the hotel and explained what the original building was and that it was built back in 1979, the original name, of course, being the Imperial Hotel and Casino. This is what that place originally looked like. So OP said that the possible explanation on what he stumbled into was that he found an old, defunct part of the Imperial Palace that never got demolished or renovated and it was kind of just sitting underneath the modern day casino. I have two main issues with this theory though. One, I cannot find any underground blueprints for this building's construction that would lead to there being rooms with no windows. That just doesn't make sense. Like, from a marketing standpoint, you're not going to have a hotel room with no windows. That, that just doesn't jive. The second issue I have is that OP said there were lights on the ceiling in different spots inside this backrooms area. I know for a fact that businesses do not want to keep any lights on or any heat or cool on in places that are not being used or are not making them money. So if there was truly this entire network of hallways and rooms that were just untouched and under the casino, why would the buildings still be paying for there to be electricity and heating and cooling? And why would they still be like providing those services for this untouched room? Companies don't ever want to waste money like that. We all know, of course, they're all greedy. Glitching out of reality is actually not an uncommon thing to happen. There's hundreds, maybe even thousands of experiences on Reddit alone of doing this. And with OP clarifying that this is not an ARG or a joke or anything, like he actually experienced this, it just lends to the creepiness of the entire fiasco. So what did the OP actually experience? Did he wander into a trafficking area where humans get sent to to be detained? Did he get into an underground cult place? Or did he just find an old hotel that somehow survived three demolitions and never got remodeled? The place this poster described was very similar, but also not so similar to where it's a copy of the back rooms. The place he saw was greenish yellow and not just bright yellow. The lights were dim and dingy and not bright and fluorescent, but there was the familiar hum buzz that reminded him of the back rooms. He also witnessed this place before he knew about the back rooms, which lends to his credibility even more. There are plenty strange places in hotels and casinos where maintenance staff and where people like that go that are not typically seen by the public, but this doesn't seem to be that place. If you press the lobby button, you're going to go to the lobby, but it seems as if OP went underneath the lobby because the alleged rooms had no windows, just dingy lights. Also, the small detail that there was graffiti on the wall means that it was accessible from other people as well. Did others find this strange connection to slipping out of reality, or is this truly just an abandoned place? My personal opinion is one of two things. One, it's actually, you know, allegedly real, or two, it's an ARG and he's just lying. I know for a fact, as I mentioned earlier, that a company is not going to pay for the electric, the heating, the cooling, and for this place to be like maintained. Like, Why would that be a thing? Especially if it's these multiple rooms and hallways that the OP described. And if they did, they wouldn't make it accessible from the elevator that all the guests use. Even if there was a glitch, they wouldn't want people going there, of course. I've looked at old pictures from the Imperial Palace, and I cannot find any pictures with no windows. I cannot find any blueprints of it that would lead to the underground place. The rooms themselves are very liminal and creepy, but they don't have greenish yellow wallpaper. They have tan wallpaper. So I don't know. But that was the allegedly true story of the Redditor who got lost and sent to the back rooms. Hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy and if you watched the entire thing, I would appreciate it if you dropped a like to push this video out to the algorithm so other people can see it as well. If you also want me to go over like more glitching out of reality and like r slash glitch in the matrix stories, uh, I'd be glad to do so. I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it as well. I know it's a little different from normal, but we're expanding this year. We're growing. You know, we're doing some different stuff. And I thank you all for supporting me through this journey. Love and appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video, I'm going to be honest. I'll, and on that note, I will see you in that next video.